Um, okay, so if you want to educate yourself a little bit more, um, just know that on the website, and I have the link here, I don't know if it's going to open up. So this is under, under for members, under learn nutrition. If you go here, and then you go to, there's a bunch of resources here. So if you're kind of just browsing the internet, there's a lot of good stuff here and a lot of really good website with lots of great recipes here. But there's also nutrition FAQ here. This is just kind of a little write-up that we did about kind of why you should eat that or not that. And it has all the typical questions that people usually ask me. So, you know, how do I get my calcium? And you know, what's wrong and what's the best type of sweetener. So we've covered most of that stuff, but you can always go back to it. Okay. So that way you can make your own decisions as to, as to what's good. You say spices are good. Hmm. Uh, hot sauce count? Look at the ingredients. Okay. And if, yeah, and if it's just jalapeno pepper and vinegar and water, you're probably okay. Uh, a lot of the sauces do have sugar, extra sugar in it. Um, and also watch out for excitotoxins. So watch out for MSG. And sometimes they won't call it MSG. Sometimes it'll be called. So one of the things you want to watch out for. Yeah, pretty much. If there's more than three or four ingredients, it's probably no good. Um, one of the other names for MSG is hydrolyzed. Well, hydrolyzed pretty much anything is bad. But um, hydrolyzed yeast extract is MSG. And you know when you like have Chinese and then you have a headache for a full day after? Yeah, you want to avoid that. And a lot of the sauces will have that. OK. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the science behind paleo. This won't be too long. Uh, can someone tell me what time it is so I can just see? Was that OK. I'm doing OK. Uh, so. Um, I spent a little bit of time with a scientist called uh, Matt Lalonde. Um, he used to have a blog. I don't know if he still does. Um, he's a biochemist, uh, biochemistry professor at Harvard. And um, he's very involved in the CrossFit community. And he saw that everyone was you know, talking about this paleo diet and what's going on with the paleo diet. So he decided he's not going to take people's word for it. He's actually going to go you know, study and comb all the research papers that he could find. And what he came up with was that paleo generally works pretty well, and the science does support it, but not necessarily because cavemen ate that way, but because a lot of the foods that we don't eat in the paleo diet were really associated with disease. And the three big ones that he found <coughs> <laughs> were, and he calls them the NADs, the Neolithic Agents of Disease, the three biggest offenders that he found were wheat flour, fructose, in particular concentrated fructose, like high fructose corn syrup, and linoleic acid, which is a fat that we find in mostly in things like uh, vegetable oils and industrial seed oils. And those were the three main things that he found that almost all modern diseases could kind of be traced back to. And so the wheat flour, you know, you came out with all of those kind of autoimmune disorders that we, came, that we were talking about, and also the metabolic syndromes, diabetes, all of that kind of stuff. The fructose, uh, what he found was that fructose, and particularly very concentrated fructose, because of the way that it's metabolized through the liver is very much a burden on the liver. And fructose is pretty much like alcohol in the way that the body metabolizes it. And so if you start having a lot of high fructose corn syrup, a lot of sweeteners, or even just a lot of foods that have a lot of fructose, like agave, for example, um, then it really overburdens the liver. And then you start getting into really toxic situations and diseases that are related to toxicity. Uh, and it's like uh, you, you can actually get cirrhosis of the liver from fructose. It's like uh, fructose-induced cirrhosis, just like you would get um, from alcoholism or something like that. And then the linoleic acid, uh, that's a type of, of fat uh, found in some nuts as well. So your best uh, nuts that you're going to be looking for during this paleo challenge are going to be macadamia nuts, almonds, and cashews. 
Mostly, and the reason I've chosen these is that they're actual real nuts, but they have the best fatty acid profile. So they have the most good fats and the least amount of linoleic acid, which is the bad fat. What about hemp seed? So that's one of the main issues with hemp seed. It does have a lot of good stuff in it and has a lot of fiber, but it has tons of linoleic acid. Is it a grain or is it a... That's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. Does anyone know? Does it? It's an oil seed. And not a grass. So grains are grass seeds generally, right? We'll look that up. I think hemp is a grain. Hemp is a grain? I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, Either way, um, you really want to watch out for that stuff. Like, small amounts is fine, but if you get to the point where you're having more of that than omega-3s, then you start running into problems with inflammation. And so people who do, like, um, hemp seed and chia seed, like, every single day for breakfast, they usually feel really good at the beginning for a week or two. And then as the fatty acid profile starts to get out of balance, eventually things might go a little ari, ari, Hurry, 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 whatever. So yeah, good in small doses if it's not a grain, okay? But yeah, watch out for linoleic acid content. And you can Google this, right? So let's say uh, you want to look it up, you can just look, look up linoleic acid content of whatever food, and it'll come up in Google. Okay, so for the challenge, we are also keeping track of water intake. So there's a little formula here. So we wrote on the, on, the, uh, on the score sheets that you guys are all gonna be handed in, we wrote two to three liters a day. So you get a point if you do two to three liters a day. Um, and I put two to three liters because I figure someone my size maybe might not need quite as much as someone who's maybe twice my size, right? Um, so we're going to go with something with, with this. We're going to try to make it easy. We're going to say if you're under 125 pounds, a couple of liters, you're probably okay. If you're between 125, 150, two and a half, between 150, 200, three, and more than 300, lots of water. Lots and lots of water. So the best way to do this, because it's really hard to keep track, is to have some kind of either a big bottle or a pitcher or something. And then you know, make sure that you get through it during the day. So what counts as water? Uh, water counts as water. <laughs> water counts, uh, but, but you're not drinking anything else other than tea and water and maybe coffee on this, right? So we'll count that. Yeah, a lot of people don't count coffee because they say the caffeine is um, diuretic, but yeah. Water, tea should count as well, yeah, okay? So that's what we're gonna do for water. So now here's the thing is that if you're uh, taking all the processed food out of your diet and you start drinking all this water, you're gonna be rushing to the washroom all the time, right? If you're not used to drinking all this water, it's just gonna be like come right in and out of you, right? So this is where making sure that you uh, keep your nutrient intake up is important and your electrolytes. So this is where uh, having a little bit of sea salt on your food or even in your water if you need to is gonna help you retain that water a little bit better so that it doesn't go right through your body. Uh, apparently the best electrolyte is pickle juice, but that's just a rumor and I don't know if that's really true or not. <laughs> better than Gatorade. I don't know. that's processed. Okay. We're also really going to try to work really hard on managing our stress. Yeah, it's really hot. Should we open a window? Yeah, are open. Okay. All right. So let's talk about sleep for, for a little bit here. So originally on my thing, I had seven hours, and I decided I'm going to make it eight hours. Yes. No. You get a, there's a big difference between se sleeping seven hours and eight hours. For me... Huge difference. So we're gonna count hours in bed, even if you're not, you know. Sleeping. <laughs> well, <laughs> hours attempting to sleep. <laughs> Someone's gonna be happy, but I won't be. We will go. So how to set up your room? You gotta make sure your room is completely dark. And what I mean by that is 
completely dark. So you shoot, if you close your eyes and you open your eyes, you shouldn't be able to tell that you opened your eyes. That's how dark it should be. So get blackout curtains, cover up your alarm clock with something, with a towel, or try to get all the, as many electronics as you can out of your room and see if you can set yourself up like a little bedtime routine that doesn't include checking Facebook. Okay? Our last vlog. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, a couple people asked me this because they work shift work and stuff like that. So we are going to allow naps if you don't get your full. Uh, so if you manage to get six and a half and then you can get another hour and a half nap in, good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I can write you a note if you want. <laughs> okay. So um, we are going to be posting a little bit more information on this on the blog, and I'm going to show you a little bit about kind of where the blog is going to be. You know where I showed you on the right hand side there. So every day there's going to be a new post. It's going to say spring leaning day one, and there's going to be a little tip and a bonus challenge every day. So you get an extra point for doing the bonus challenge. And the way we're going to set this up is that for the six weeks we're going to have a diff uh, six different themes for all the six weeks. So the first week is going to be getting into the right mindset and preparing yourself for all of this. So we're gonna like make sure that you guys are doing a full pantry clean out. We are gonna make sure that you're checking with your friends and family to get support from your friends and family for this. Um, you can, if you want, you can lie and tell everyone you have celiac disease. If you, ha if you feel as though you need to. Um, to start off with. But you know what, I find that you don't have to lie. Usually if you just say, it just doesn't agree with my stomach, people will understand. As opposed to saying, oh, well, I'm on this diet. Try, don't say I'm on a diet. I don't like hearing that. It's not a diet, it's just. So you're testing the celiac. Yeah. Just testing it out for six months. Yeah. I'm trying this out. <laughs> See if I'm sensitive to this food. Okay. Just tell them there's a bunch of money in the pot. Yeah, you tell them that too. Yeah. I don't eat this food for six weeks. I might win. Yeah, I might win a grand if I don't eat this. Um, so, and then we're going to have uh, stress, stress as another one of the themes. Uh, and then we're going to do, I believe, supplements. And then we're going to tweak the food timing. And we're going to do one on sleep, I think. So you're going to see that coming up through the website. Um, but the main thing that you need to know about stress is that there's good stress and bad stress, and stress happens to everyone. Um, but it's this idea where you run into problems is when you're stressed out all the time and you can't calm down. So uh, the hormone that's involved in this is cortisol. So when you are in like a fight or flight situation, so mama lion or mama bear is running after you or something trying to take over your cave, and you need energy, like right now, to be able to run away from mama lion or something, right? So at the, in that case, what's gonna happen is your body produces cortisol, adrenaline goes up, you get a surge of energy, um, you actually will get stronger for a short period of time, and you're able to cope with those stressors. The problem is that we are walking around all day in our jobs with our bodies thinking that there's a mama lion running after us constantly. And so our cortisol levels, which should go down as soon as we're no longer in a stressful situation, are, is just staying up the whole time. And so basically your body thinks that you are in like a life or death situation constantly uh, if you are stressed out. And that's a problem because it causes inflammation, it makes you store body fat because when your body is worried about getting away from mama lion and being stronger and running faster, it's not digesting properly, it's not regenerating any of your cells, um, it's not doing any of the other stuff. It's not even sending as much oxygen to your brain. So. If you're in that stressful situation, you have to know that your body is just too busy dealing with the stress to make you lose weight. So that's kind of a way that you can look at it or to lose fat. So we still want some stress 
good stress would be like a CrossFit workout. That's good stress. Um, but it's short, and then once you're done your workout, you calm down, you chill out, you have a good night's sleep, and you're not stressed out. You leave work at work, you leave the workout at the workout, and calm down and chill out. So those are the things that we're gonna try to focus on this week so that we can stay lean. So what other types of things can your body see as a stressor? I submit that a marathon might be seen as, as perhaps a stress on the body. So I found this picture because I thought, it, I don't know, you guys can't really see this very well, but we've got body types for marathon runners and body types for sprinters. And I don't know about you, but I would rather look like that than like that. Maybe there are some people who would rather look like that. I don't know. Um, but the reason, um, the reason we train the way we do is specifically so that we can positively impact those hormones so that we can keep the stress short and then recover from that very quickly. Um, and so one of the things that you're going to want to watch out for a lot of times when people try to lean out is they say, I got to burn more calories. I got to burn more calories. I got to start running. I got to get on the treadmill. I got to get on the stepping thing and the like Jacob's ladder thing and all those other the elliptical. I don't even know all those machines. So, so, and sometimes that backfires for people because if they don't enjoy that type of exercise, the body can see it as a stressor. Granted, you are burning some more calories, but maybe why not burn those calories by going out for a walk or playing outside with the kids or playing a game of pickup basketball or hockey, which is something that your body's not gonna see as much as a, as a stressor. Does that make sense? Okay, so these are kinds of things that we wanna watch out for during the challenge. How am I doing for time? What time's it? 3.35. So um, four, the latest, because I got to start measuring people at four. So maybe give, give yourself five minutes more. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've got maybe another five, 10 minutes worth of stuff, and then we can take questions. If you need to leave, go ahead. Um, so um, you're on the paleo diet, you're doing the challenge, you're sleeping, you're working out, but you need, it's not working. You're not losing fat, let's say. So um, let's look at the common pitfalls, okay? So let's say you're not losing fat. One of the things I want you to look at is how much fruit you're having. Particularly if you tend to store your fat around here, um, you're gonna wanna look at how much sugar you're getting from the fruit. Nuts, so a lot of linoleic acid in the nuts, a lot of calories in the nuts. Um, some people, once they start with the nuts, they can't stop with the nuts. Uh, the, <laughs> the other thing is some people don't digest them very well. So if you're one of those people, you may want, to, there's a couple things you can do. You can either just say, I'm not going to have them, or you can decide to have them in a form that you can control it a little bit better. So for me, I know I get gassy if I eat a lot of raw almonds, but if they're roasted or if they're in almond butter, I'm fine. And I think it's because maybe I don't chew my food properly and when it's, when it's already all like... But roasted, you, know. you have to do that yourself because that's the roasted in mm -hmm. crap. Exactly, roasted. yeah. But what's too many nuts then, do you think? Is Depends on the person, right? What was that sample uh, food diet thing you put, or meal plan? Yeah. It showed like it was probably... That's too much. That's too much. Too yeah, that plan was not meant to be an example at all. It was meant to be... The counter example. <laughs> Yeah, like it's just what a real life person might might look like. Um, if you're looking to lean out, I would probably stick to like maybe no more than a dozen once or twice a day. It's not much. It's not much. No. Um, Okay, the other thing that we see a lot of is not enough variety. Someone's like, oh, I had a perfect day today. I had a three egg omelet for breakfast. I had a spinach salad with chicken for lunch. And I had um, pork chop with uh, broccoli for dinner. But wait, I had that for the last three weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah. So that can be a problem because A, you become sensitive to the foods that you eat over and over and over again, but also you're getting 
all the same nutrients all the time and you're not getting some of the other stuff that you're not getting from the other foods, right? So be really careful about that and switch things up every once in a while. For your first week or two, you probably don't want to worry about that because all you're trying to do is get through the addic original addiction. Okay, but once you get a couple of weeks in, you do need to start having more variety so you can get different amino acids, different vitamins, and just not get allergic to those foods. Okay, um, and then of course, not enough sleep, too much cardio, which seems a little counterintuitive, but we already talked about that. And the other thing is the desserts that we were talking about. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's paleo, you know, and because you can make really good stuff with like just sweetened with like bananas or dates or something like that. And it tastes delicious. And it's a really, really great option if you have kids and they, you know, have like a birthday party and you need to, you know, give them a, a cake or a dessert or something like that. But if someone comes up to me and says, oh, I've been doing strict paleo for a month and I haven't lost any fat, and then I find out that they're having paleo muffins every day for breakfast, that could be why, okay? Okay, just wanna talk a little bit about things that you might have to do differently uh, depending on if you have any other issues. So if you have an autoimmune condition, lupus, asthma, Crohn's, uh, MS, uh, any of this stuff. You're also going to want to look into taking things out such as eggs, nightshades, so peppers, tomatoes, that kind of stuff. Um, what else? What am I missing? They usually do okay on the red meat. Getting your fish oil in and Yeah, so that, that would look into more, more supplementation, but that should be kind of um, monitored. Um, so, but those are the main things is that, you know, if you do paleo and then you start having eggs every day and you have lupus or you have Crohn's or IBS or something like that, those eggs are probably not going to serve you too well if you have them every day. What does eggs do with an autoimmune? Uh, there's something called lyso, uh, it's a long word. Uh, that tends to create an immune response. Uh, it's very similar to the stuff in the grains and the beans and the legumes. And it's the same with the nightshades. The skin on the nightshades has saponins and some other things in it that uh, you have to be more careful of if your gut is already leaky. Okay, okay. Uh, other things are uh, digestion and transitioning into paleo. So those we can put together. So a lot of the time when people start this out, they have weird digestive symptoms at first. So, you know, they might get constipated at the beginning. So, and that's a really common one, especially at the beginning. So you wanna make sure that you are getting enough vegetables, get lots and lots of vegetables. And if you have digestive issues, um, something more along the lines of like IBS or a lot of food sensitivities or something like that, you definitely wanna peel all your fruit and most of your vegetables and cook them. Um, as much as you as you can, um, because you're just not going to be able to digest that as well as someone who has who doesn't have a leaky gut. Um, and then you can do the same also if you start experiencing those digestive issues when you first transition. Um, the other thing that you can do if you get constipated at the beginning is uh, increase the fat a little bit. It's just going to help things move better in the body. Um, and you can also try magnesium, which we're going to talk about when we get to supplements. Okay, let's do supplements and then we'll come back to the exact instructions for the challenge. Okay, so we said we're not going to do shakes for this because they're too processed and I think a lot of people depend on them a little bit too much. Um, so what kind of supplements are we going to allow? I also don't want to see people doing like, what's it called, ephedrine and all kinds of like weird stimulants and like fat burners and like, let's try to do this as clean as we possibly can. Um, but if you do want to take some supplements, here are the ones that I would kind of call my top five. Is that five? Yeah, that's five. So uh, fish oil, and this is particularly important if you're not eating grass-fed meats and pastured meats. If you are eating pastured meats, you don't need as much. Most people do fine on just a couple of grams. 
official and what you want to do is if you look at the label it's going to say something like 1.3 grams of omega-3 bullshit so what you do is you look at the thing and you go to the back and you're going to see two or three little things it'll say EPA DHA and other omega-3s and then other other I don't know what the other other is um, but you want to look at the EPA and the DHA and you want to add that up. It's usually going to be in milligrams, so it'll say something like 250 milligrams of EPA and 150 of DHA, right? So that's like 400 grams, so 0.4 grams. So if you wanted to do 1.2 grams, let's say, uh, you'd have to take three doses or three capsules like that. Okay, that's your fish oil. Um, so two, I, I usually say two to three grams as just like a maintenance dose, but if you do have either cognitive issues, mood issues, inflammation issues, you can go significantly higher than that. You can go like up to 10, even more grams. Just remembering that it does thin your blood. So if you have a blood clotting issue or if you're taking blood thinners, keep that in mind. It can interact with that. Or if you're going for surgery, Right, or if you're gonna be in a situation where you might bleed, make sure that you're not on a really high dose of fish oil. Multi, just as insurance, most people don't really need it, but I find that I do feel better when I take one. Uh, vitamin D, hopefully we're gonna have more sun, but um, most of us are probably deficient from the winter, um, and you may even wanna consider it taking it year round. Um, and they keep upping the RDA, it used to be like 400, IU and then it was 800 and then it was a thousand now I think it's like 2,000 I recommend four to five thousand IU per day because we're Canadian we just don't get enough unless you were to be like naked in your yard all afternoon okay <laughs> 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 uh, the other one is magnesium a lot of people are deficient when you're stressed out it takes up all your magnesium stores in your body um, and so if you've ever had an Epsom salt bath uh, and you found it relaxing, you are probably deficient in magnesium because it's magnesium sulfate. It relaxes all the muscles. It also calms down your nervous system. Um, so magnesium, if you just wanna take it just to help you sleep, that's fine too. You take it before you go to bed. You do not take it with calcium because the same receptor sites on the brain use it so you can't absorb both of them at the same time. So you should take them separately if you do want to take them sep uh, do take calcium. Um, you can do, for magnesium, you can do liquid, you can do capsules, you can do powder, you can do topical, like a cream. You like the cream? Yeah, people like the cream. Yeah. So we have like a topical magnesium that they're talking about. Everyone loves that stuff. Um, and that's a great option. You rub it where your skin is really thin and it just absorbs straight into your bloodstream. But if you're taking it, let's say, because you're constipated, because you just switched over to paleo and your body's not used to it yet, um, you would take a little more, like maybe like a full gram and then you might want to go with a different type. So you can ask me about that afterwards if that's something that, that you're interested in. The last one is digestive support. So this is different for different people, um, but sometimes something like a probiotic can help if your digestion is off or out of whack. Um, sometimes HCL, you, sometimes you don't have enough stomach acid. Usually when you get af acid reflux, it's actually that you don't have enough HCL. Um, and then enzymes, some people need enzymes. So if you're not digesting well, particularly if you didn't eat a lot of meat before and all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start eating meat now. Your body only produces the enzymes that it feels like you need based on the foods that you've been eating, right? So it could take a little while to adapt. And did you guys wanna ask about any other supplements? Five minutes. Five minutes? Okay. Good. Good question. So zinc, you can stay on the zinc. BCAAs are a good alternative to whey protein during a workout or after a workout. Um, just make sure it's not in like those drinks that have like the sugary BCAA drinks. We do. We have the pills, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, why do you need, do you know for sure that you're deficient in calcium? Okay, so yeah, if you know you're deficient in calcium, you can take it. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it for men, though generally it's been associated with strokes actually in men and women, but more so in men. So always get tested before you start taking calcium and only take it if you are deficient. Just to clarify about whey protein, like it's not a lot of them. No, too processed. And no shakes. Right. No Unless you want to make your shake out of like vegetables and coconut oil and raw eggs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, juicing is okay, but remember that when you're juicing, what you're doing is you're taking all of the things and then concentrating it into a liquid full of sugar. So why not just eat the vegetables? And how are you going to get your protein? I'm just in a rush and I need just something. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine, but remember that as soon as you take something and you put it into a concentrated liquid form, that your body's gonna absorb it really fast, and if it's a lot of sugar, it's gonna increase your blood sugar. But I'm just saying, like, I'm not adding anything other than. Right, but how many vegetables are you putting in there? And what kind of vegetables? No. Yeah, so just be, just be cognizant of that. You know, be, co be cognizant of the amount of like sugar that's coming from that, that's all. And, and when you juice it, you're losing all the fiber as well. So remember that. Okay, we got five minutes. Okay, so better. Yeah. You can take the pulp and you can pour the pulp back in. You could do that too. Yeah. Or a Vitamixer. Or a Vitamixer or a blender. That'll do, but make sure you're getting some protein as well. Yeah. Yeah. So have some eggs or something to go along with it. I I've done raw eggs in a shake and I haven't had any issues at all. Um, it's just like you put that instead of protein powder. Really? Yeah. Coconut oil. It's awesome. Yeah. Almond butter, egg, and okay. Um, so we're just gonna finish up here, guys. Um, I'm gonna take a couple minutes for questions, but before I just want to go over, like. I know you guys are just begging to know, like, okay, now I told you all the kind of basics. So now you need to kind of get ready and actually get this done. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a list of the foods that you wanna be eating over the next six weeks. So I have here um, on the CrossFit Winnipeg website, there's something called the food matrix. What's cool about this, you can make your own. What you're going to do is you're going to make a list of all the proteins that you like to eat, all the vegetables, all the fats, and all the spices. You can use this list, or you can make your own. So now you basically pick one from each column, and you got yourself a meal. Okay? Pretty easy, right? Um, the next thing we're going to do is you're gonna make a plan. Make yourself a meal plan for the week at least. Try, try at least the first week. I think it's worth it to have some kind of a plan so that you're not coming into this unprepared, right? So from here, um, I've actually took an idea from Caveman Strong and they made a meal, a week-long meal plan. I tried to find inspirational pictures here. Quinn is like completely oh, ripped oh, there, so. Leave it there. Inspirational. Leave it. Look at his mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him I put this up, so I, maybe I should ask his permission. No, just talk to him about it when we see him next. So where will we find these? Uh, I'm gonna put this up on the website. I just finished it this morning, so I'm gonna put it up on the, on the blog. So I didn't actually put any recipes here, but this is just to give you an idea of how it doesn't have to be complicated. You know, it's, you know, and it's there for you. And even though, and there's actually way more food than you need here, like way more food. Like if you're just having leftovers, you could probably skip it every second or third day on here of cooking. And what I've done is I've given you guys a shopping list. Um, no recipes though, but you can just Google it or you can just cook it like you would usually cook it at home. It's not, doesn't have to be complicated. Like 
Steve always makes me the best. Like he made me yesterday. He, I love it when he makes this. He makes me um, pork chops with rubbed with um, rosemary and all kinds of spices from the garden. And then he just cooks it up with Brussels sprouts and butter. And to me, it's like the best tasting thing ever. <coughs> but it's simple. It takes him like 10 minutes to make and it's just Brussels sprouts and butter and rosemary and pork chops. You know, it's great. So I'll give you guys this. So that's the next step. You make your plan, you go shopping, okay? And then you figure out when you're gonna do your prep. So let's say Sunday, you prep as much as you can for the next couple of days. And then you actually sit down, enjoy it, eat it. And then at the end of the day, you log it. So you're gonna have until five o'clock the next day, if you're doing the points, to log your food. Okay, so let's say, uh, Sunday's food, you're going to have until 5 o'clock on Monday to log Sunday's food. So is today the first day? Um, officially, it's tomorrow, but if you've been measured already, I highly recommend that you start. <laughs> so, right? Give yourself as much time as you can. We're not having a feast tonight? Like your last meal? You could. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally what I'm doing. I'm some pizza. And no alcohol. <laughs> Yeah, alcohol count. So let's go back to the score sheet here. Do I have the score sheet? All right, so I'm just going to go back to the score sheet and then we can take questions. Okay, so this is the score sheet. No processed foods, no grains, sugar sweeteners, industrial seed oils, dairy, beans, legumes, alcohol, water, sleep, workout, and the daily bonus challenge. So those are the points. So you can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points per day. But if you're if you're like going to fat loss, we shouldn't be doing six days a week, even if it's CrossFit, should we? Uh, for the workouts, you mean? Yeah. Um, here's what I'm going to recommend. Um, I have to. Yeah, it is. It's a tough one. Um, so I was going to count only the CFW workouts because that's all that I can actually vouch for because I can't vouch for anything else that you do. Um, we're going to get, I mean, we understand that not everyone's going to get a point every day. Um, and if you do have an unlimited membership and you do want to come in often, make two of those days, make one day a mobility day, make one day a yoga day and make the rest of them Workouts. Mobility and yoga count as. So we're gonna count them. Yeah, I'm gonna count them. We can't do something like a half hour walk. Um, that's gonna be that's gonna be part of our daily challenges, but because we can't really like. Yeah, and we can't because we can't like we don't know what people are doing and we can't measure it. Yeah. So it's okay if you don't have a point every day for workouts. Like it's not a big deal. It's fine. So some of us are still part of the on ramp. Mm-hmm. Will that count? Yep. yep. Well, because we don't know we what people no, well, we don't know <laughs> we don't know what people are doing, and yeah, so yeah, we're just do, yeah. No, and I believe you. It's just yeah. it's just we need to draw the line somewhere. Okay. And then we don't know where to draw the line. Like, does it count if does it count if you do a five minute walk? Does it count if it's a twenty nine versus a thirty minute walk? Yeah. Does it count if it's a yoga class? Does it count? You know, There's like some people who have like three times a week, two times a week. Unlimited. Yeah. It's tricky. That's yeah, and just keep in mind, guys, that we're doing this for your health. So a point here and a point there is not going to make a huge difference. And it's not like we've got thousands of dollars on the line for the points. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Are you doing the all in or the all points? In. So, yeah, so keep working out. Do yeah. what you need to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And don't worry about it because you're doing all in, so we won't be counting the points anyways yeah. for you. Well, we will ask you to, to hand that in at the end, yeah. even if you're doing the all in. Write yeah. yeah. down the next week. Yeah, yeah, keep writing it down for sure. Yes? If we did like a workout and mobility in the same day, can we do the points? Mm, no, no. no. <laughs> I have to make some snap decisions here. I, I, you know, half of these things I haven't even thought of. Yes. The first time, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, just yawning. So, any other questions on kind of the rules? I am surprised no one's t asked me what counts as a processed food and what doesn't count as a processed food. Okay. So we're gonna allow bacon. 
I'm going to low bacon. Or does it have to be bacon? Yep. It's a small package. Oh, you're just intentional. Come on. She said yes to bacon. I said yes to bacon. I figure I got to give you some stuff, you know. I got to give you little things here and there. So what I did is I wrote up the rules. And if there are any more questions, I'm actually going to put the rules on here. I started writing a definition of what everything's going to be. So processed foods, OK. So um, processed food is any commercially prepared food designed for ease of consumption, sold as hot, ready to eat dishes, room temperature, self shelf stable products. Wikipedia, thank you very much. Um, OK, so here's what we are not allowing. Candy, beverages like soft drinks, breads, bars. Even the bars that have pretty good ingredients, like the ones that we do, we're not going to allow. No so, Lara bars? No Lara bars. Even though the ingredients are very good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> OK. But they've got like 50 grams of carbs in them anyways. It's like all your carbs for a day if you're trying to lean out. <laughs> um, and then so crackers are out. Cookies are out. Fast food is out. <laughs> cheeses. Well, we're not doing dairy anyway, so that doesn't matter. Um, all the canned things out except for if you want to do tomato paste yeah we're gonna talk about that in a second so I'm gonna allow tomato paste um, I will allow tomato sauce if it doesn't have sugar in it good luck um, almost nice all of them do what's that nice Th that's okay so what about deli meats and, and which ones would be allowed uh, so deli meats um, the country naturals. Yeah, the, those are the natural ones. I think we're, those are good. We're going to keep those in. Because sometimes you just need protein. Yeah. Um, but no, like, um, no, spam or bologna oh, or, yes. like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Canned fish that's uh, packed in water. Canned fish is okay. Yeah. As long as it's packed in water, too. Yeah. But even some of them, like, if you get, uh, like, you can get sardines in olive oil. That's fine, too. Yeah. Sardines. <laughs> That's awesome. Or when you travel, it's awesome. <laughs> Sardines are so good for you. They are. <laughs> okay. Sardines and liver. Um, oh. So we are going to allow canned coconut milk is okay. Canned uh, like tomato paste, canned diced tomatoes. With coconut milk, if you can find the ones without the lining. Yeah, the BPA. On the on the yeah. Table. The other thing too is you may want to look for uh, coconut milk that doesn't have guar gum or carrageenan in it. It's hard to find, but if you can, uh, that stuff's really not good for you. Um, I don't remember them off, off heart uh, by heart. Uh, salsa, if it doesn't have any sugar in it or other stuff that's not allowed in it. Um, we're going to allow frozen vegetables, frozen meats, bacon, sausage. But for your sausage, though, I don't want like the cheap, like crappy sausage. Like only the ones that you get from like Frigs or the ones that are pretty clean that don't have any MSG or sugar and no, or and no, and no gluten, gluten free. Yeah. yeah. To get okay. from like a Butcher, yeah. Okay. yeah, ask them for something gluten-free and uh, soy-free and, okay. um, and you should be okay. I will usually order, go to a diner and order breakfast and ask for no toast, no, um, no, toast, no hash browns and just have like either an omelet or, or eggs and bacon. Breakfast is the easiest one. But, but a lot of diners lunch, will serve bad. that for lunch, right? So a lot of, so that's an option. The other thing that you can do is uh, do a burger without the bun with a salad and ask them like do the do the like deluxe burger with the bacon on it and the whole deal. And people used to look at you funny, now they don't anymore. They're really good in restaurants. You could do salad with double the meat or you can order like an extra side of meat to put on the salad. If it's dinner time or if they have like a lunch dinner that has like, you know, like an actual dinner with vegetables or that kind of thing, you just ask to replace the potatoes with a double vegetable. You could also do like if you're doing Greek, you could do like skewers. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Like what would I do in like a McDonald's? No. no, but you know, sometimes you just have to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fish burgers are probably apparently the. You know, you would probably have a salad with a grilled chicken. Salad with the grilled chicken. Um, and, and here's the thing the dressing is tough in restaurants, but most places, if you ask them to just bring you um, oil and vinegar, they'll do that for you. Uh, just make sure it's olive oil and not canola oil.
Are we being picky to the point of like if, if you get a burger without the bun, they're probably frying up your burger and you like on the camera? Yeah, well, there, not, you, are there, being picky to that level? No, not for this because like you don't know. You don't know. If you don't know. Let's just say that would be a huge step up from what I mean now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Any other <coughs> questions? Yeah. 401. I don't supersize. How much cardio is too much cardio? Like if you enjoy going for your run um, so it depends on the person, it depends on stress levels. Um, and when we do the measurements, I can tell by the biosignature measurements. So like if I were to measure you, I'd be able to say yes, no. Um, it's not that cardio is bad, it's just you're gonna get better leaning out results if you go high intensity interval, not so intense high intensity, or if you keep the actual cardio to like an enjoyable, like never ever, like panting kind of like. So if you were to go for like a leisurely trail run or a walk, that's cool. Um, and if you really enjoy it, and if you find that you're as lean as you want to be and you don't hold anything in the middle, then keep doing it, right? Um, you have to experiment and you have to figure it out for yourself. When is the Cindy workout? Uh, we did it today. Uh, and tomorrow has part of the workout. So it's not like we have a date set for that. It's just part of the regular program. So it's just part of the classes. So we did it today and we're doing it t again tomorrow. And then at the end, we're going to do it again the Saturday and the Sunday. Is it mandatory? It's not mandatory. It doesn't count for points. It's just so you guys can see. So, but what you can do is you're in the on ramp. You're going to see at the end of on you're going to do. 10 minutes of it on Friday. Yeah. And you, and you know what? You're going to get to do baseline again at the end. So you get to see how much better you know. Yeah. No, I mean, probably do it. Do you think we could do it if our setup on Monday? Do you think we could do it or do you think that's a question? Hey, hey, how about you think about it? Yeah, I can think about it. The problem is I, I can't have a coach just for that. Um, and we don't allow unauthorized uh, workouts. But there's another thing that you could do is you could do a really good at home workout that you could do as a tester would be the burpee ladder. So you set your timer to go off every minute. Yeah, but that would be a great tester because you could do that any time, right? And that's a really, really good tester that you could do. And that one you can do any time, and I don't need a coach to coach you through that. You know, it's not like you're on the pull-up bar or on the rings or anything like that. And you could either do it at home or you could do it here. That would be an awesome tester. You do it on the first day and on the last day. And then never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> anything else, guys? Yeah, so apple cider vinegar has so many good uses. Uh, really good if you need, if your digestion is bad, you take a little bit, a teaspoon before your meal, and it helps to, uh, your body kind of kicks in and digests better. As it relates to coffee, I haven't heard anything. I, I thought it related to energy. Like it could be could be um, and I think it's related to actually blood sugar because anytime you have water with lemon or lime before a meal and I think it's the same with apple cider vinegar even though it's acidic I think it makes your body more basic and it actually modulates your blood sugar better like the HCA. yeah so we can exclude lemon in our, our water yes okay. oh. I highly I very yeah detoxifier and yeah that real lemon is okay because I think I don't see any sugars in there. Yeah, it's check the ingredients, but it should be okay. I think it's just lemon and water. I think so too. Yeah. It's just a little bit more potent. Never watch because I tried that. I did a little bit too lemony one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay. I'm just wondering when the best time to eat certain things. You know what I mean, like carbs. No, opposite. So you want to start your day, everything you eat the first part of the day is kind of going to set the stage for the rest of your day. And the worst thing you can do in the morning is spike your blood sugar because 10 o'clock rolls around and then you start crashing and then you have like a coffee and then you have Starbucks and then you're like, oh, I want a cookie for lunch. And then you do it again and then three o'clock rolls around and then you get the same thing, right? So what you want to try to do is really focus on protein and good fat early on in the day as much as you possibly can. Yeah. You were going to say what, what fruits were the good ones? Okay. 
So the good fruits are, or the least sweet fruits are your berries. Um, and then you can look at uh, things like um, maybe citrus and then melons and your sweetest ones, ones that are you're going to have the most sugar and the least nutrients from are going to be your tropical fruits like your bananas, your mangoes, uh, grapes, even though they don't fall in that category, very, very sweet. Yeah. Apples, orchard fruit, those fall somewhere in the middle. So if you are trying to lean out, stick to berries. That's probably your best bet. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm going to be taking some measurements. So what we can do, guys, is um, you can catch me anytime you see me if you have any questions. But you can also, po I'll answer in a second. Uh, we can also post questions on the blog. And I'll try to answer them, because then everyone will be able to see the answer. <laughs>